Hey, Build Show Network, Steve Basic Architect here. We're live from the Hilltop Aero Project. I'm standing out on the deck and I'm waving this piece of plastic. And you're probably wondering what it is. Well, this is Benjamin Obdike's Batten UV product, right? So you heard me talk about rain screens before. And rain screens are nothing more than furring the siding off of the weather resistive barrier to provide a gap that allows water to drain down and out, but also allows ventilated air to move up and out, right? To take that, any moisture in there and dry out the backside of the cavity. So you can see here that it's grooved with a series of channels there. And then when I turn it this way, each of those channels are heavily dimpled so that I can install this this way and get moisture to migrate down that way or I can install it this way and allow water to migrate down the channel and down the spaces alongside it right so how does this all apply to the house and what are we doing um, I'm just gonna do a quick mock-up um, I grabbed a couple pieces this is the siding that we're putting on the house these are just a couple cutoffs but it's uh, it's a channel cove siding it's made by Boral True Exterior, and um, you know it's a it's a fly ash product, recycled uh, fly ash that's blended with some polymers to uh, constitute this and then formed in this shape, if you will. This is their 10-inch product. You notice that we have a little rabbited edge there. That rabbited edge allows for each of the boards to kind of bite the next one but then have that sloped or um, cove channel there to shed water, but also to give that negative profile that gives that kind of siding, that banded look. But how would that look on the wall, right? Couple things of note here. We already have the siding around the corner. Notice that this batten strip that's already been installed isn't installed tight to the corner. It's installed about an inch away and that's intentional. What then happens is we have this other one here, but I'm going to put this because our sample pieces are a little shorter. But so we put our batten strip in. Just put the bigger one here first. And then, let's see here, line that siding up. We put that there, move this out a little. And you can see what's happening there, right? That batten strip now creates the space that goes down the back side of that siding and down through the middle of that. And as the siding gets stacked, you can see there that it just goes up and it kind of extends that channel and it has the ability to drain out the bottom, but also bleed air out of the top. So we get the gravity motion of bulk water moving down and then we get the air drying motion of stack effect moving up through the back of that, whisking whatever residual moisture is in that cavity away, drying out our weather resistive barrier and the backside of that siding. Lastly, remember we talked about, we held that off about an inch and a half or so. Well, this is just a really quick mock-up, but we will then put our corner piece over the outside like that. And then this will be fully vented in that corner and then we'll have our vent space here for the common siding, but then that's the aesthetic that the finished product will yield. Now, this one is oriented obviously in the vertical position. We have, you know, one of the beauties of Boral products is they have different profiles. So this is their eight inch nickel gap. So when you put this together, it basically gives that reveal that, yeah, it's the thickness of a nickel, hence nickel gap, right? Um, and the beauty of nickel gap is you can put it horizontally if you want to have those joints going um, horizontally for that effect, or you can install it vertically, which is what we're going to do here. And so basically we would have that strip that way, and then our nickel gap would then get applied vertically over these straps being spaced, you know, 24 inches, but then that water is able to move, migrate through those grooves and dry out the back of the siding as well as dry out that weather resistive barrier. So 
Anyways, let's, uh, now we'll go back to the studio. We'll talk a little bit more about rain screens. All right, everybody. Hey, who doesn't love a good video on rain screen and water management? Does it get any better than that? I don't know. It's uh, putting that building in a position for success. Anyways, speaking about success, we got my good buddy Big Red here. We're about to dive into some details and uh, let's talk about how we got to success. All right, everybody. So, broke up. Beautiful detail here. Just to get you some orientation, that is the bottom plate of the second floor. This is the top plate of the first floor. This is the band joist area. And this is our floor truss. In there, and then we have our subsequent floor truss here. That's out on our common spacing. All right. So, rain screen starts with the frame. And in this case here, you can see we have our 2x6 T-stud we used out at the project here. And 2x6 T-stud there. Right. You can see that void that that T-stud provides. Then we have our zip on the outside here. This is our zip R9. So you have the insulation in here. But that's our... R9, our T stud. So the magic is everything that's happening outside of that zip R9. So you can see we have a little space there. That little space is roughly about three eighths of an inch. Remember three eighths of an inch. It's a it's an actual. Uh, intended call because at three eighths of an inch you can't suspend a water droplet across there it's gonna fall because it's just a little too far for the weight to strength ratio of having that water droplet suspend itself between a space so that three eighths of an inch it's known that that water will fall to gravity. So we have that in our favor, right? We talked about these before. Rain screen. What is it good for? Could have made that a song, huh? One, draining. That's right. Draining. Three-eighths of an inch. Those water droplets, where do they go? We use gravity in our favor. And we drain it out. All right. Down and out. Remember that. Down and out. All right. So that's our number one accomplishment with a rain screen is the down and out, drain it out, get rid of the water, right? The best way to have water management is to get rid of the water, right? The longer the water sticks around, the longer it has the potential to be a problem, the longer I have to manage it, the longer everything, right? We want to get rid of it as fast as we can, down and out, get it rid of it, provide that space, make it go. Now, the beauty of that rain screen is it also has a second aspect. Dry it out. All right. So while we have water moving in the direction of gravity and falling for us, we also have dry it out. We get air moving in this direction and it will dry our system out so as that air moves up through there it's taking any moisture well we use boral siding here so boral siding doesn't really have the capacity to take on water so a lot of times i would say it's going to take some moisture out of the back side of the siding and whisk it away but the the beauty of boral is that it really doesn't have the ability to take on water so but what this dry it out has the ability to do is take any moisture from our sheathing and assembly and whisk it away. 
and help dry that out. Did you know the code allows for a uh, degradation of vapor barrier inside if you have a rain screen? So you get to drop a class in vapor barrier on the inside, make, meaning that it's less stringent, and uh, if you have the ability to dry. So the building code actually acknowledges the success of a rain screen. But, um, but there you have it. One, drain it out. Two, dry it out. Now, you know, as, as we talk about this, I know I say drain it out. The one, the one thing to keep in mind in that, you know, some people might have a uh, hard time, not necessarily grasping, but just their, their initial thoughts on it. When, when you're talking about draining, we're not, we're not talking garden hose or fire hose environment of draining water here, right? Um, you know, it, often people are asking me, how, you know, how much water really gets back there? Well, some will, um, but we're probably talking, I don't know, you know, less than 5% of the water that hits the wall here as rain actually gets pulled in and on the back side. But it doesn't take much water activity to create things like mold, to create water rot, water management problems, all of that stuff. So it might be little, but that little um, means a lot. How's that? Did you know what the number one killer of buildings is? Number one, and it's by far, it's not maybe or maybe it's close, all of that good stuff. The number one killer. There you go. This is some insight here, right? Number one killer of buildings. Yeah, you guessed it. Water. Water is the number one killer of buildings. So how do we put our buildings in a position for success when the number one killer of buildings is water? It is, we get rid of it. We drain it out and we dry it out. So that's the whole purpose of the rain screen is to battle that number one killer of buildings. So there you have it. That's uh, the rain screen in a nutshell. Hope you enjoyed uh, our little walk with Big Red. All right, everybody. So time to put Big Red to bed. So that's it. Where can you find more? Steve Basic Architect on Instagram. I'm there all the time, posting stuff daily. Check it out. We got all kinds of great stuff going up there. My daughter, Alexandra, who works with me, Alexandra Bazek, she's on Instagram posting great stuff. Um, you can also find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Facebook at Steve Basic Architect. You can find me on the Unbuild It podcast, right? That's where I talk with my good friends Peter and Jake. We're on YouTube, so you can find us there at the Unbuild It Show, or you can find the Unbuild It podcast through all the normal channels, right? iTunes, all that good stuff, and uh, where we break down all kinds of building concepts, and we have a, a lively chat, to say the least, about it. Um, and uh, lastly, Build Show Network. I mean, come on. You got to watch these videos seven times. That's what the science says, right? that uh, to grasp all the information. And when you're done with mine, you go watch Matt, Jake, Brent, Wade. These guys are putting up fabulous content. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's almost everything about rain screen. I know we usually end the video here, but uh, today I'm going to throw a little bonus at you. I did a little just playtime testing out at the job site. So these these videos aren't professionally done. They're not. Don't go criticizing me. All that good stuff. But uh, but they do get a point across. So check them out. Enjoy. And until next time, long live our buildings. You can see here we have some batten strips. These are Benjamin Obdike. Uh, they're UV batten. We buried them under zip tape. You're probably wondering, okay, why are we burying batten strips? Well, those are just providing end dams. For those of you not familiar with it, this is what the UV batten strip looks like. So when installed vertically, you get some really nice channels there. They move some water and then you get the spaces in between. But when this is installed horizontally, it has those little grooves. Now, some of you, like me, 
probably sit there and say, how well do those grooves really work? Because they don't look very large. So we're going to find out today. So I put those end dams in and we made it so that we can put a piece across there and then we put siding across the top and we poured water through it. So, so we're going to test the UV batten strip. We're going to pour some water in there. And lo and behold, underneath, it drains. Let's see if we can pull this off and you can see what we did behind there. But basically, we had that batten strip, you can see right there, right in between, and then the water migrated down through those micro perforations.